My daughter just graduated from university recently. It was a proud mama moment, but there were times that she would call me very stressed out, convinced she couldn't go on another day. But when your mom is a plant scientist, this is what the conversation sounds like. Honey, have you gotten outside and gotten enough vitamin D? Honey, are you drinking enough water? Are you getting out in nature? Have you taken your vitamins? Have you been to too many parties? OK, let's just take a deep breath. I'm afraid I've been treating my daughter like a houseplant with complicated emotions. As a plant scientist, though, I have gotten really good at taking care of my houseplants. That's because nature provides basic principles on how to take care of yourself. You know, um, Additionally, when you buy plants at the nursery, they also put those little tags with instructions that teach you how to take care of your house plants. So that helps. Nature provides interconnected principles that help create balance. If you think about trees in the forest, underground, their roots branch out and connect to other trees. This very much resembles a human nervous system. These similar sy systems exchange information, share resources, and even warn each other in times of danger. A single tree out in the forest doesn't thrive alone. And you know what? As humans, neither do we. We need our communities, and trees need those root networks. It seems, living in Western culture, we're getting further and further away from these basic principles of nature. In fact, our everyday lives barely resemble our natural world. I'm embarrassed to admit, I don't even know who any of my neighbors are. All living things require some basic building blocks to be in balance in order to thrive. As humans, why do we think we are any different? I think our instinct is to just reach for a quick fix or a pill, rather than looking at the root of the problem. We need to look at which one of these building blocks are out of balance and keeping us from living our best lives. We need to look at nature for more direction. I came across a Stanford study that really connected to me. These researchers were looking at the impact of the natural environment on mental health. So they took a big group of participants, and they broke them in half to two different groups. They specifically wanted to look at rumination. So these are those negative thoughts that repeat over and over in your head. Have any of you ever had those ruminating thoughts? I know I have, too. So with the two groups, they took that first group and said, you're going to take 90-minute walks through a natural environment. So these were like grasslands, trees, and shrubs, while that other group was asked to take a walk through an urban environment down a busy street in Palo Alto, California. Both before and after the walk, the participants were asked to take a questionnaire. And additionally, they underwent a brain scan that would measure the activity in their prefrontal cortex. The group that walked through the natural environment showed a significant reduction in those ruminating thoughts, and additionally, a reduction in their brain activity in the prefrontal cortex. Now, I bet you could guess what happened in the other group. The group that walked through the envi other urban environment did not see either one of those reductions. So what this study tells us is that walking in a natural environment, spending time in a natural environment, 
will have a significant impact on our mental health. Now, the reason this connected with me is because I experienced this exact thing. I could no longer deny my connection to nature. You see, I haven't always been a plant scientist. In fact, the last 20 years, I spent deeply rooted in the fashion industry. So it was all glamour on the outside, but pretty toxic on the inside. You know, it was hustle and overconsumption and trying to sell this perfect, unattainable image. I was anxious all the time. And even my family relationships were struggling. I think my soul knew I needed a change. My brain just didn't know it yet. In order to escape, I started spending time out in nature. And I started feeling more of a sense of balance. Once I was away from all the noise in the city, all the noise in my head started to go away. I started to feel so much more at balance. It's almost as if nature was telling me that my career and my soul were headed in opposite directions. So the turning point was when I was playing tourist at NASA Johnson Space Center. I walked into an exhibit that talked about how NASA scientists were trying to grow plants on Mars. The problem is, Martian soil contains perchlorate salts, which are toxic to humans. The scientists continued to explain about this natural process called phytoremediation. Now, that is just a fancy word for plants having the ability to clean soil, water, and air by either the uptake or the breakdown of contaminants. If we can clean toxic soil on Mars, can we do that here on Earth? It was that moment, at the age of 44, I decided to walk away from the fashion industry. Instead, I vowed to go back to grad school and study plant science. So as a bonus, I would even learn to finally be able to take care of my house plants. I want you to picture a piece of land contaminated by an oil spill or even manufacturing chemicals. Traditional cleanup methods would involve digging up the soil and moving it to a toxic dump or bringing in heavy machinery to set up a soil vapor extraction system or a pump and treat system or even a, a, a thermal system where we're heating up the soil. These are all expensive cleanup methods, and they have a heavy carbon footprint. Now, what if we could plant trees and use specialized microbes and let nature clean up the contaminated site? Enter endophyte-assisted phytoremediation. Now, I know this sounds really complicated, but it's really cool. So endophytes are just plant microbes that live inside the plant. So the plant provides the endophyte a home, while in return, the endophyte breaks down the contamination. It's kind of like having a roommate who actually cleans up after themselves. Now. This teamwork is called a symbiotic relationship. But not all endophytes are created equal. That's where the work of Dr. Sharon Doty comes in from the University of Washington. She went out into nature and found the best endophytes that can break down all different kinds of contamination. There are endophytes that clean oil and gas. There are endophytes that clean chlorinated solvents. There's a bunch of them. She took them back to the lab. She tested them to make sure they were the best at doing the cleanup and additionally characterized them. She then passed the baton to Dr. John Freeman, who took the endophytes 
deployed them out in real world scenarios on real contaminated sites. In the past, scientists would just plant trees and hope for the best. But now we can give them an endophyte boost, which basically supercharges the trees, helping them grow faster, tolerate the pollutants, and break down contamination faster. So this is using nature's system to work for us. So I know you guys all want to see an endophyte-assisted phytoremediation system in the real world, right? Right? Let's see it. So this is an aerial view of a Superfund site. Now, a Superfund site is a contaminated site that's designated for top priority cleanup by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. This site here is in Mountain View, California. There is a former micro microchip manufacturer that has unfortunately contaminated their groundwater with a volatile organic compound called trichloroethylene. Now, we're going to just call that TCE from now on for short. So what's happening is there's a uh, uh, contaminated TCE plume in the groundwater that's heading from the microchip manufacturer under the 101 freeway and towards the NASA airfield. So our team came in, planted trees, and treated those trees with the TCE microbe. So these trees are going to start breaking down that, T that uh, the TCE contaminant. If you look at this image, you can see the trees that were treated with the TCE endophyte are green, they're thriving. They don't seem to be bothered at all by that contaminated groundwater. But if you look at the control group, the trees are stunted, they're yellow. Us plant people call this sclerosis. This image is seven years later, and effectively, the trees have created a phyto barrier. So just through their natural process of transpiring, they're drinking up the groundwater, and then the endophytes are breaking down the contaminant. Now, how do we prove that this is working? We have monitoring wells both upstream and downstream of these trees. So the upstream well, when we take water samples, you can see the different contaminants within the groundwater. But when we look at the downstream monitoring well, those wells are reading non cotex Now, I told you that these trees are seven years old, but that non detect was happening after two years. So pretty cool. But additionally to that, these trees are providing a beautiful uh, green effect for the community. So not only are we helping the environment, but we're also beautifying the community. No hauling dirt, no bringing in heavy machinery, no carbon footprint, just trees, microbes, and using the power of nature. I know it's easy for us to just immediately think that we need to use complicated man-made solutions to fix our problems. But I think that we forget that there's a lot of very simple, elegant solutions that are provided by nature. We just need to rediscover them. Whether we're cleaning up contaminated sites or connecting with our community or getting reconnected with ourselves, we need to look at all those building blocks making sure that they're in balance so that we can thrive. Sometimes the best solutions are the ones that have always been here within our nature.